Hello and welcome to Your Individual Wedding, the wedding podcast that helps you feel seen and celebrated as you plan a day as unique as you are. Hello, Keely and Bryony. Thank you so much for joining us and being on our podcast. Would you just like to say hello and talk about how you met and your love story? <laughs> hello. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> Keely doesn't really remember that we met. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, we have slightly different versions because my memory stops uh, and, and, and in a dream world I just got in a taxi home and it was delightful uh, but Bryony's <laughs> probably got a more accurate version of the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean so the actual meeting was relatively anticlimactic. Um, I was on a night out with some friends, Keely was on a work night out and both of our various sets of friends were either being boring or ready to go home. And then we bumped into each other and got chatting. Um, Keely was very adamant that I kept her out and got her drunk. And um... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was heading for a taxi when I met Bryony. So. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, we, we got we got chatting and, and it did result in dancing on the tables. Uh, Keely so- fell off. I did fall off a table. Um, oh, how romantic! <laughs> very, very romantic. But it's, it's whenever we tell friends that, uh, and people are kind of surprised that we didn't meet through an app these days. So yeah, we we went old school, and met on a yeah. night out. <laughs> Isn't it? Most people say they met through an app, and actually, even a few years ago, if you say you met through an app, there's all, almost a hint of embarrassment. Whereas now people are just like, no, met on an app, and yeah. So you look. Old school drinking. Classic romance. There, we like that. So, yeah. I, in your groups, were you both the people that obviously parted the hardest and stayed out, and were the last ones to go? <laughs> Is that normal for both of you? Yeah, in those yeah. days. <laughs> I, I still like to think I could do that but yeah <laughs> hangover is a bit more of an issue you know but yeah uh, yes yeah it was it was Christmas time you know works Christmas dues you've got to be got to be out to the early hours if someone else is paying for your drinks you know I was I was picturing it I was picturing it as Christmas so yeah. was were you were you in Manchester was it Manchester city centre yeah yeah so in, in Albert Schloss in the uh cabaret with, with, with the band was playing wasn't it Mr Wilson's yeah, second line is a big yeah. uh, big party brass band were playing which we we tried to get them for our wedding the, the price has gone up significantly since, <laughs> since then so. yeah oh, so, oh, sorry Ross carry on go on Heidi I was going to ask I was going to move forward I don't know if you wanted even more details I was just I was just going to comment that dancing on the tables is is something that seems to be particularly uh, personal in in Manchester. I've I've had many <laughs> dancing on tables in Manchester again a long time ago. Couldn't do it anymore. I'm a responsible <laughs> adult nowadays. And um, so yeah, we love a love story. So who proposed? Well, was was there a moment, Keely? I'll, I'll start with you. Was there a moment where you thought this is the lady I want to spend the rest of my life with? Oh, Did it creep up. No, I, I, yeah not quite like the films where it's like boom this one moment I think uh I don't know I suppose like I but when Bryony moved in I thought you know this is this is going to work out all right because we we were a bit on and off for for the first phase of our relationship and that's mostly due to me being a commitment phobe so mm-hmm. when we got to the landmark of Bryony moving and I was like oh right she's in my space now this probably means that I quite like her <laughs> 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 yeah, um so yeah it wasn't kind of a, a light bulb moment I think like the films but um yeah just just growing up a bit and realizing that I do I do want to spend my life with her and uh yeah come come into my little very defensive bubble <laughs> yeah yeah well that is that definitely is the moment isn't it yeah when when you get the key cut and you think oh yeah. <laughs> well they're really apart from plucking myself in the bedroom there's no escape yeah. anymore <laughs> yeah and, and and then the car turn up with all the extra bags and things that i've got to find space for in the house i was like oh god <laughs> <laughs> it then, i like it i yeah. like it yeah, yeah. Um, i've grown up since then <laughs> Bryony, um who who proposed i did yeah oh. And uh, tell, us, tell us more, where, where did the proposal take place? Was it romantic? Was it uh, a day-to-day event? Had you planned um, it? Yeah, well, I'd planned it in that 
I'd bought a ring and I knew I was going to do it, but I was like, oh, it should be natural. So I'll just carry it around with me until there's like an <laughs> opportune moment. <laughs> and then the first day that I took it out, we were just going to the pub and I took it out and it was like burning a hole in my pocket. I was like, oh God, I've got to get rid of this thing. <laughs> um, so um, we had been for just like a midweek meal, went to the pub and we're playing Scrabble. Um, <laughs> And I decided to put it in the Scrabble bag. Um, so I did that. But then I was like, oh, well, I don't want to do it like right at the beginning of the game, because then if she finds it straight away, like I, I do actually want a game of Scrabble. Um, <laughs> so so we, like, play, oh. we play quite a lot of Scrabble, I'm quite competitive with it. So it's not so much like about the moment of proposing, probably it's more about thrashing me or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'll, I'll ride it out for a little bit. Um, and then we were playing and we got like three words in a row that was like, we got love, vow and something else. And I was like, right, it's time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the ring in the bag. Um, and so I was scoring all the way through. Like every time Keely was getting the letters, I was like trying to do the maths, but watching her, cause I was like, oh, I don't want to miss my proposal. So I was like watching her trying to do maths. And so it's going on and on. And we got to like it, the end of the game and she still hadn't found this ring. And every time oh. I was feeling it was like, it's still in there. I was like she's she's found it and she's she's backing out and she doesn't know what to do about it so she's just ignoring oh, it oh, no. <laughs> like took me back to the commitment phone game <laughs> days where I was like she's just pretending it's not happening <laughs> oh my goodness T- turns out that rings are a bit heavier than scrabble yeah. tiles so it's very much in the corner of the bag <laughs> <laughs> so yeah then she eventually found it um when she was like oh is that all the tiles and I was like oh there might be one more in there um and she pulled it out and she was like what's this <laughs> Oh wow! Uh, it's for you. And <laughs> she went, "What's it for?" Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so that was the proposal. <laughs> oh, no. no, you did ask me. You asked me if I wanted to do some forever with you, and I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> oh wow! But can I just rewind though? Because so, Brian, you said the word love and the word vow. Okay, yeah, so- there was a there was a third word that came up where it was like three in a row that were all like. And that, and that wasn't, that wasn't no, like no. Um, no. that just happened. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That, I mean, that's giving me goosebumps. That, that, <laughs> it was literally like the universe was going, yeah. come on, do it. <laughs> that's amazing. Did you, yeah. you not it? Have you got a photo of the Scrabble board? Yeah, yeah, I can send you if you want. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah. It was oh. very fitting, I think, for, for our relationship, though, just like in the pub playing Scrabble it was lovely winter time it was kind of like a, around a similar date to when we met mm. actually wasn't it yeah um so yeah I thought I thought it was perfect for mm-hmm. for us and our relationship oh I th- honestly I just I can't get over the fact that, <laughs> that accidentally those words came out that is yeah. that is yeah. like yeah I'm not really all that woo woo but 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 yeah, yeah it's just it's <laughs> weird isn't it that that happened yeah I should also point out that whilst Brian was anxious about me like not finding the ring she did manage to batter me at that game and I was (laughs) (laughs) it was a journey it was a roller coaster (laughs) everyone's a winner all the emotions all the emotions I love it yeah so you obviously said yes and started planning your wedding how did that go was there one of you that was more sort of forward thinking and knew what they wanted were you both in agreement about things um I don't know you you were a bit Mark because I didn't really care how we did it or what we did because I was just like yeah I just want to get married I don't we can we can go to Gretna Green or Vegas or do a big party and you were more on the big party weren't you um yeah I think it was a slight toss-up between shall we just bugger off to Vegas and then should we do a party and ended up being the party yeah and I think well I've got I've got a large family um and my childhood is growing up at family do's and dancing all night to you know to Motown and soul music so it I I wanted to have a big do but you know at that point we weren't aware of COVID (laughs) this was like this was uh well we had our engagement party February 2020 um but we'd yeah we were kind of kind of close to to the big scary thing around the corner 
Um, so yeah, we we started looking at venues because around that you know winter time there's quite a few wedding fairs and things. Yeah, we went to a couple of countryside, uh, gorgeous settings, and we were kind of we went to look at two or three of those. Um, and we were kind of sold on one of them, weren't we? Mm. And then we went to a wedding fair at, at um, a warehouse in Manchester uh, just to see all the suppliers and things. And we were looking around going, oh, this is pretty cool, isn't it? Like, yeah. So, yeah. so and, it, and it kind of, that was when we were like, yeah, th- this is this is the kind of wedding that we should have. Yeah, we booked it on the day, didn't we? Like, went to the fair to, like, check out some photographers and then we were like, oh, we've booked our wedding. <laughs> wow. So so you actually booked, um victoria warehouse in manchester was that where the the wedding fair was yeah 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 Yeah. what was it in particular that you you loved about that that setting um well i'm i'm a man girl i've grown up in manchester i I absolutely love it and it's culture um and and i liked that it was well it's it's, you know it's an old cotton warehouse um i like the little nod to history but more like it was slightly different and and I thought you know me and me and Brian have uh, throughout our relationship spent a lot of time kind of partying out and about in Manchester and I thought you know whilst a gorgeous countryside wedding is great it's not really reflective on how we've spent our time together mm. um and, and doing something a little bit different is is kind of like us because we don't always kind of tread the line and fit the mold yeah so. Yeah, yeah, and it is, it is a cool venue. You're absolutely right. I mean, it's really cool. <laughs> your wedding photos looked fabulous and, yeah, absolutely wonderful venue. Um, sorry, sorry, what made you, you said you went and saw three country venues first. What? Why was that your sort of initial uh, plan or vision? Was that just because you thought that's what people did? Was that the norm or...? <laughs> I think it was because we were looking at sort of, we knew we didn't want stately home, we knew we didn't want church. So right. we were looking kind of country farmy barney sort of places um and yeah we were i think we were both trawling the internet and looking for places that weren't you know kind of trying to find somewhere we wouldn't have thought of right. um so there was like a couple that came up further out that were like old theaters and stuff that we were like oh that's quite cool but yeah i think victoria warehouse being in manchester like we didn't want it to be somewhere that meant absolutely nothing to us mm-hmm. um yeah, and just after that fair and it being all like dark and cool lighting and whatever else, we yeah, looked like a good place for a party. <laughs> so were there any sort of special considerations once you'd, you'd booked Victoria Warehouse, um, and it is it is a very urban setting, isn't it? Were there any sort of special considerations you had to make um, with regard to, to planning a wedding that would take place? in a city centre venue and, and that sort of urban venue? Um, the, the, the biggest challenge or well, consideration, I don't call it a challenge, is uh, the football. So oh, yeah. Victoria Warehouse is right next to Old Trafford. Oh, yeah. and, and it's another reason why I wanted to, to get married there because I'm a United fan and so is my family. Um, but uh, when we booked it, the, the uh, fixtures for next season hadn't been released. So it was a gamble whether we were, we were going to clash with the football match. Um, yeah. And we did. And it was the first game of the season. Um, and so all the fans are flooding to the stadium at the same time that we were going to get married. <laughs> yeah, we had to make the time. <laughs> yeah, and, and getting a registrar there was it was going to be difficult to make sure they're on time. So we, we did, we moved the ceremony back an hour or so just so that kickoff had happened everyone could get transport you know the taxis were available and we could actually have a registrar there on time yeah. so that, that was the, the 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 only thing we had to really think about because logistically everything else makes sense you've got the hotels around town for different budgets you've got easy transport it was just the football yeah it's, it's amazing actually how how we've, we've spoken to people haven't we Ross who have planned weddings and then discovered that it was like um a, a, a crucial um England match um and yeah half of their guests were wanting to watch um England in yeah one of the the um later stages of the World Cup <laughs> and, and it's one of those things that um you almost can't plan for because you know a lot of the time it's it's a it's a movable thing isn't it you know it might might happen on your day it might not happen on your day um so did you have 
United fans at your wedding who wanted to watch the match, or did you did you manage? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, my, my family are season ticket holders, so, and, and the first game of the season is quite an important one. It's a big day out. <laughs> well, your dad was in the pub before the wedding, wasn't he? Yeah, my dad was out, and my brother, well, my dad was out, yeah, with um, some of the wedding guests taking him into the, one of the United pubs in town. Um, so he kind of he got 90% of the experience, just didn't quite get the match. Um, but, <laughs> but what was quite good is well, it's quite fitting, I think, because we were playing Leeds United. Brian isn't from Leeds, I mean, she doesn't care about football, but <laughs> it was the it was the War of the Roses, uh, football yeah. match. It was War of the Roses wedding, and um, yeah, I, I, what I really loved is when I arrived at the venue and I got out of the car and United scored, so I got 70,000 people cheering my arrival. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. That's fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wonderful. You did mention to me, um, uh, Keely, at one point uh, in the run-up to your to your wedding, you spoke about the lighting in the venue um, and 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 how that had a bearing on the photographer you you chose. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah. So we. Um, obviously, a lot of photographers, you know, go for the, the you, you can get stunning pictures of big landscapes. And we, the warehouse that we're getting married in has, I think, a maximum of three windows in the room. And they are tiny slits because it's it's an old cotton warehouse. So having we wanted to make sure we got the right photographer that was able to work in that space, but also was kind of able to be creative in that space. Um, So we, you know, we spoke to a few and they were kind of like, well, that's not our jam. And then we found um, Nick Bryan and his kind of career to that, this point as a photographer was doing gigs and festivals um, and, and, you know, following bands around on tour and, and shooting them. So he, could deal with a lot of people dancing in the dark and making them look great um as well as doing you know you know more traditional well not he doesn't do traditional wedding photography but being able to do portraits and and things as well um so for us that was a big one because you know your memories may fade over time but your photos don't Mm, so yeah Absolutely. I mean, Ross, you're you're a, a photographer. You're a wedding photographer, so um, that must be uh, music to your ears. To, it's, music to me. it's also music to my ears that you spoke to photographers and they said it wasn't their jam because I think that that was really honest of them that they didn't just go along with it and then you got substandard photos. Yeah. We always hear horror stories of people not being happy with their photos, so I'm glad that you know you took your time. And you met with photographers that were honest yeah. about that your wedding was suitable for their style as well. Because it's a yeah. great thing, isn't it? Yeah, because it, it was at the wedding fair where we did speak to a few. And, and there was one that was kind of like, I'd love to do this and I'd love to to shoot a wedding here. And we were like, well, let's have a look at your work. And none of it kind of did fit with what we were looking for. So we were like, OK, that's great but please, we don't want to be your experiment. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So did you, do, did you do any sort of pre-wedding shoot or did you just go straight in on the day? Yeah, we did um, We did a pre-wedding shoot in the Northern Quarter. Um, so all kind of outdoorsy industrial stuff, um, which I think was initially, I wasn't bothered for doing it. Um, but my rationale was because it meant that it was as little time in front of the camera as possible. And Nick was like, well, that's kind of the whole point. Like, if you feel awkward about doing it, that's more reason to do it. Um, really? And it was definitely, it was a really good shout because that even through the um, kind of prep photos, there's like there's loads of good ones, but you can see us relaxing as it goes along, like the first sort of bunch of them. The photos are good, but we're not good in them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, as it went on, we were getting more comfortable and kind of got used to the idea of some of not kind of paying attention to the camera so much. Um, so it was definitely, if I got married again, I'd, um, <laughs> I'd do a pre-wedding shoot again. <laughs> yeah, there's funny look there. I'm not sure. That... <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah. Like renewal of vows and all of that. Yeah. that. We're, only, we're only a year in, and Brianie keeps talking about having another do. So it was a great party. <laughs> and obviously, you say you look from a from a technical and lighting point of view with your photographer. Did you have 
any concerns about their portfolio in terms of inclusion and diversity and seeing couples like yourselves? Um, I, 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 whoa, no, no is the answer because he had that diverse representation in his already. Um, yeah. But if, it, if we were looking at others, is something I notice it all the time. So, um, you know, if it was just kind of the straight cis couples, or, you know, and doing the traditional uh, portraits, then we probably would have been like, hmm. I don't see myself in this, but Nick, uh, he's got loads of experience of just working with different types of couples in different environments. So it just kind of seemed quite comfortable for us. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. You did research and found found your your photographer. It is is good to hear because, yeah, unfortunately you do hear of couples who, yeah, they, they, they don't do their research when it comes to photography. And it's a big investment. And it's like you say, it's something that you are, going to be looking back on for years and years and years. So yeah, it's yeah. good to, to find that, that, that good match. So when you told friends and family about the, uh, the, the warehouse venue that you'd chosen, what was their reaction? Were they all <laughs> delighted you that you laughed? <laughs> <laughs> I can hear something coming here. Go yeah. for it. <laughs> so my, my sister was like, that's cool because they, they do concerts in the warehouse next door. So it's on her radar. For everyone else, it was kind of like, what? <laughs> uh, particularly my dad and my brother we were like, that's where we used to park when we went to the football like 15 <laughs> years ago, this derelict warehouse. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think it was a slightly unusual one. My mum was probably the most shocked. Um, but I, again, just saying like, well, when have we done everything like we should? So um, yeah, we got people around to it quite quickly. Uh, yeah. I don't know, if, you know, Bryony or mum, was probably a bit shocked. <laughs> I, I don't know. My mum, she she comes across as somebody who would be shocked by non-tradition, but then like shocks you in return every time. You're like, oh, best approach this one carefully. She's like, okay. Um, <laughs> so yeah, like she she was just in it for the party. She didn't. Care. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and did um, did they get to see the venue beforehand, or did they just turn up on the day and and that was their first yeah. experience of the venue? They did actually, because um, they, there was another wedding fair there a few weeks later or a couple of months later. So we, well, at some point, um, so we got both both the mums together and uh, took them around to just show them, and it, and then it kind of became a bit more realistic for them to see what it could look like. Um, so yeah, I think that 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 afternoon won some votes. Yeah, <laughs> got everyone. And also, it was also good, I think, because we'd already booked it. So it was like, even if they didn't like it, we didn't need their opinion by then. <laughs> so yeah. Even if they yeah. got any, what are they doing? We're like, we played a deposit. So. Yeah, that's that, I like that actually. That's uh, that's that's a good tip. Just step, <laughs> yeah, book everything, tell people about mm-hmm. it afterwards, and then yeah. yeah. That's what I was going to say. Was that your approach to most of the, of the wedding? Did you just go with what you wanted and there wasn't any sort of pressure or anyone in your ear sort of trying to yeah. tell you otherwise. Yeah, so, I mean, ultimately it's our day and our decision. So we, we did what was right for us. Um, I, you know, asked for permission. And, yeah, you're not going to get it. So it's always best to ask for forgiveness afterwards, isn't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it was, it was uh, we did we did what was right for us. And, you know, you can, you can get bogged down with parents wading in. I think you hear horror stories sometimes. Our parents aren't the ones to wade in. They may have had some comments on who we're inviting and not, but not what we do and, and how we get married. Yeah, that's amazing. That's that's wonderful. So so you you celebrated your first anniversary a couple of months ago. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Can't yeah. believe. It's it's that. <laughs> yeah. What what a year. Um. So looking back, is there um anything that you would pick out and say, yeah, that that went exactly to plan, or that went better than we planned, or is there a moment that that friends and family say, oh, you know, that that was amazing about your your day. What what went really well? The band. The band were amazing. Yeah. Yeah. They were a great decision, weren't they? We we've yeah. got the the uh, Blue Lion band. Um and, and and again it ties back to us wanting to have a great party. Uh and Blue Lion can do things from one guitarist up to twenty something bodies. So I think we, we went for a seven piece band in the end, didn't we? So, you know, we got the brass and we got everyone dancing straight away. 
Um, um, so yeah, they definitely brought they they brought the party with them, didn't they? Yeah, they're amazing. Yeah, and where did you find them? At the very same wedding fair. <laughs> we had we had a very easy approach to planning a wedding. We rocked up, <laughs> saw a bunch of people we liked, and cracked on with it. So. <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, and again, it's advice that um, that that we've given. You know, if, if if you see suppliers that you love, book them. Don't don't go home and have a think about it because there's nothing worse than sort of two weeks later saying, yeah, actually, yeah, that, that's definitely the, the, the band we yeah. want or that's the, the, the cake designer that we want. And then you go back to them and they say, I'm so sorry, but I'm, I'm, I'm fully booked for that day. Because, you know, yeah, you've got to start from scratch and it's, it's a pain in the butt. So it's, yeah, it's, it's great. See them, like them, book them. It's, it's, it's a great approach to, to, to wedding planning. Um, so um, so the, the, the band was the, was the highlight. Was there anything um, that, um, that went better than you'd anticipated? Hmm, that's a very good question. I, th- I think there was like, people still talk about our wedding now. And I don't know if that's just people being polite, I, but I get the sense it is. And um, so our wedding was the first weekend post all wedding relating restrictions being lifted so the weekend before we wouldn't have had a dance floor and we were kind of going well what's the point in having a party wedding if no one's allowed to dance and we were kind of wondering what to do but it was the first weekend and there's people that haven't seen each other you know family aunties uncles everyone that we haven't seen for the best part of two years all in one room so it was just such a good vibe yeah. uh, so the day actually went way faster for everyone not just us two because it was just such a, a big day out um, mm. so I think that will always kind of hold uh, like a nice place for people as a as a memory of, yeah. uh, just feeling a little bit back to normal yeah yeah I think also like the other thing that I knew we both wanted an afternoon wedding, but I think I underestimated how lovely it would be having the time in the morning to not be mad rushing. Like it was kind of like you got two days in one because I felt like I had, because we didn't get married till two, I think. Um, So we had basically like a day of just nice loveliness, getting ready and chatting and drinking brews and whatever else. And then we got a whole day of, a wedding as well um and I definitely yeah definitely having the time to just enjoy the morning rather than it being a means to an end um was really really nice yeah, yeah. I mean it would have been a challenge if we had a 12 o'clock wedding because brownie's rubbish in the morning so <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I mean a wedding prep always goes really quickly anyway though doesn't it because you know you sort of there's so so much happening in terms of you know you've got to get yourself dressed you've got to make yourself look wedding ready uh, yeah people arriving um, flowers and all that sort of malarkey going on so it always goes quickly anyway but yeah that's a, a good shout a two o'clock wedding and a, a nice relaxed yeah. approach I tell you, well, one surprise we did have, Bryony, was the flowers, actually, seeing as you mentioned flowers. Yeah. So my my auntie's a florist um, and she lives in Newcastle and she'd done the flowers for my brother's wedding, my, my dad's wedding and my stepmom uh, and my sister's. And so we were like, this is the perfect fit. And she she came to hang out with us and was like, let's go and have a look at the venue what do you want and we were like flowers uh, <laughs> I don't know uh, and she said well what tell me exactly what you don't like and I'll do the rest so actually on the wedding day or the day before the wedding she rocked up with her van and was like what do you think of this and we were like these are mega <laughs> um, and she went full bright colors and loads of wildflowers and just something that we'd never really seen before yeah. Um, so that was like a real surprise and then seeing how the venue was she dressed she just got free reign to do what she wanted so how she dressed the venue and the tables was was actually a really nice surprise because she just got on with it and we did not consult at all <laughs> yeah, the colors were amazing in your flowers there's that that um quite close portrait uh, shot that nick took of the two of you yeah um it was head to head and you've got the the sort of flowers 
front and center and they're really brightly colored and that's that's a gorgeous portrait so the colors yeah. were absolutely fantastic Akili, i'm just waiting for you to mention the headpiece any any time <laughs> <laughs> well see see that that wasn't a surprise for me but it was a surprise for all the guests see. <laughs> 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 because like I wear it as a necklace now. It's part. It's part of my life. <laughs> um, so my students at school, when when I showed them some of the pictures, like they didn't care about me at all. They were just like, "Is she wearing a crown?" Like, yes. Like they're in their sixth form. <laughs> like, Is it a crown? I was like, yeah, it's a crown. <laughs> yeah, quite right. Quite well, right. You know, I'm I, I'm quite a, a neutral tones dresser. I, I I kind of like you know jeans and and a couple of shades of grey. I'm I'm kind of quite neutral. I made me some colourful socks every now and again. So it's like my wedding day. I'm going to have as much colour as possible, and I'm going to look as extra as possible. And yes, I am wearing a crown. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> By the way, that's custom made so the colours match my colourful dress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a gorgeous dress. Lucy can't dance. Beautiful, beautiful dress. Absolutely. Well, we um, hear quite a lot about, um, or we talk a lot about people staying true to who they are and not having to change. But it's quite interesting that actually sometimes on your wedding you do want to do something a bit different or step out of what you yeah. usually do colour wise. So that yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, to- I, I looked different, but the attitude to, to it was very much me. I'll, I'll do what I want yeah. and I'm going to have a good time doing it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I look I look very different, but I felt very much me. That's yeah. good. Excellent. So if you got, I mean, we've already said about doing it all again, but if you did get married again or you renewed your vows, would you go for a similar setup? Would you choose that kind of vibe again? Would you go for a city wedding? I think so. Yeah, I can't imagine it. Do, having done it any different or doing anything yeah. outlandishly different to yeah like I think, I think we got it party yeah we got it pretty spot on I think for for like I said before just to represent who we are as a couple to each other I think yeah I wouldn't change it unless you know we could always do the the Vegas wedding another time couldn't we yeah yeah <laughs> i've never been to vegas i'd love to go to vegas although having seen the elvis movie i'm 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 desperate to go to to graceland now i, I promised myself one day i'll go to graceland and having seen elvis three times um, yeah a bit, bit addicted to that so um, yeah i mean your job is to play around with shiny things so going to a land full of shiny things makes so much sense <laughs> Absolutely. i need to go and see that rhinestone outfit <laughs> <laughs> oh, in Vegas. I need I need to see it up close. Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. So uh, no, I think we were we were great with our wedding, and uh, yeah. I, I yeah, I love looking back at the pictures and just thinking, well, yeah, it was just perfect for us. I think. Mm. Cool. So, do you have any advice for our listeners that uh, maybe haven't chosen a venue yet and are uh, sort of edging towards uh, an urban and a city wedding? What would you sort of say to them? Do it. <laughs> do, do it <laughs> I mean there's um f- from a selfish perspective you could take out a load of worry on logistics because you you know your wedding day is going to be most likely to be quite expensive and probably the second most expensive thing you'll spend your money on to a house um and you want to get it right if you can bypass some of that because you don't have to ferry people around um let people make their own way there <laughs> if you're in a central location and yeah. and kind of also just being respectful of your guests budgets people have to travel and if you're out in the sticks somewhere and, and the, the only option is a 200 pound a night room if you're in a city center you've got all sorts um people can do do what they want and however they want yeah that's um, good advice actually that's really yeah, good I've never even considered that element that's really interesting yeah, yeah. Having, having, I mean, I've done, been to dozens of weddings now, and 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 for your guests, I mean, it's so much fun, but they can be quite expensive to attend, can't they? So, you know, um, having a bit more flexibility for people is, for some, quite an important decision. Uh, and for us, I think, you know, we've got family all over the country, <clears throat> um, so we, you know, we wanted to have as many options for them as possible. Yeah, it's. I mean, it sounds like um, that the. the, the the two of you pretty much took on the wedding planning, you know, wholeheartedly yourselves. 
But is there any help that you would have appreciated? Sort of looking back, is, is, is there anything that perhaps you could have outsourced that you didn't or um, friends and family that could have, have helped in some way? Um, and looking back, you sort of think, oh, we could have, you know, yeah, we could have saved ourselves a whole lot of time if we'd asked so and so to help us with this. No, and I, I think, think go on, the reason oh. the reason that we didn't need outsourcing help is because we had a cracking set of friends and our bride teams. So, you know, Bryony had uh, five bridesmaids. Uh, I had bri four, sorry, four. <laughs> uh, four uh, 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 my sister and bridesman and a, another bridesmaid. And they were all great and very good at receiving instructions and getting stuff done. Um, so probably one of the key pieces of advice is choose your team wisely and you know just sometimes because you've you've known someone a long time and they look pretty in your pictures that might not be the best fit uh for actually helping you because your bride team or groom's team are there to support you and help you out and you should delegate where appropriate and take advantage of their love and support and we mm. did that very well didn't we <laughs> that that being said i think because um like on my side because i didn't have like a maid of honor because I didn't see the point because I was like, oh, everybody's equally important. I don't want to be like, you're my favourite. Um, but I think there was, if, again, if, if we were to do it again, I think maybe I would have said to somebody just so that they knew who was the one who was kind of in, not in charge, but there was, because it was all very important people that I had around me and nobody wanted, I think, to tread on each other's toes. So mm -hmm. that if I'd have had a maid of honour, then I could have just, shot it to them and gone can you make sure someone does this please rather than like I was having to the week before kind of pick specific roles for specific people and writing them little letters being like pretty please will you be in charge of this 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 and this whereas if I had a maid of honor I could have just spoken to one person and been like make sure this shit gets done <laughs> yeah yeah so like a, a sort of a, a coordinator for all yeah. yeah 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 again that that makes a lot of sense um Keely, you said just then, and I find that quite interesting, you know, be careful who you ask to, yeah. to do because they look good in a photo might not necessarily mean that they're the, the best support. So did you have to make that decision at, at, at any point, sort of think, you know, I'm going to have to ask you over you, or was that just no. a, a apparent to everybody? Yeah, it was just a very natural decision. Me and my sister are best friends, and I did a lot of work at her wedding to make sure things went well and problem solve and we, and she does the same for me so very very natural um I just think it's more of an observation from other people's weddings perhaps where <laughs> you you see things that are going slightly wrong and or you know someone needs a bit of guidance or a photographer needs someone to rally people and mm -hmm. they're all just enjoying the day rather than you know you're you you do have a role in this wedding get on with it <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think that's important to remember. I, th I think it's we talk about sort of the moment you're asked to be a, a bridesmaid or a groomsmaid or, or or part of the wedding team, and it's all a lovely moment and sort of you know what you're going to wear and it's going to be fun. But yeah, perhaps that discussion of what responsibility and what that actually involves needs to take place a little a little bit more definitively and a bit quite early on in the process perhaps yeah for sure it's not always about hens and stag do's because it's 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 the day and the run-up to the day and all the moving parts that go in it you you need reliable people to to do problem solving um and, and yeah to make sure that you don't notice whatever the hell has gone wrong in the background yeah mm -hmm. yeah Absolutely. Yeah. It's again, yeah, it's a really, really good point. Um, and, and we've all been to those weddings where you're sort of looking at a member of the team and thinking, uh, <laughs> you're just <Hello>. <laughs> so was there anything on your day that did happen that you weren't aware of until afterwards that your team did take care of yeah for sure yeah. so <laughs> I, I was sat in a car outside the venue and my sister so my bridesman Ben he's an absolute superstar he went early to make sure that everything was set up and they just could not get the sound system working um so my sister the the message had trickled through to my sister and Julia my other bridesmaid to delay delay as much as possible because we can't get any music going um which then fed on to Brian and he was arriving separately to me uh, driving that they've managed to get the driver to take a wrong turn and was driving away 
away from the venue. Yeah, so I was losing <laughs> which, my mind being like, it's over there, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. oh, no. um, and it was actually Nick, our photographer, who came to save the day because the cable we've been told to use by the venue was actually the wrong cable and Nick who's like I see this every weekend I have a car boot full of cables come and take your pick so he'd actually he saved us and got everything back on track but all the while I'm just having a little deep breathing and trying to sort my nerves out in the car whilst um, they're actually inside shouting and getting stuff done (laughs) oh my goodness that is phenomenal though that's amazing to have someone but there, there nearly always is somebody there that, that says oh yeah I carry those safety pins cables whatever it is around with me all the time and yeah, yeah just just finding them but that's that's amazing that uh, that he just had in the boot of his car but did you say he was involved in the music industry uh yeah but I I, I think that was more from being a photographer I think I think he just he just sees these issues quite often uh, and of course we had Kieran who he was doing the videography with him and and they they work together as a team and they both see similar things and it's like you know what he can carry a, a two pound cable in the car and it actually helps people <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 so again sort of looking back on your day was there anything in the run-up um in the the planning process that perhaps was stressing you out a little bit um, or that you placed a lot of emphasis and, and importance on getting right, that sort of in retrospect, looking back, perhaps you expended too much energy worrying about it, um, that, that, yeah, that, that, that at the end of the day didn't really need that kind of energy from you? I don't think so specifically. Like, all the way through, we were, we kind of got in our heads straight away. I remember us having the discussion where we were like, it's easy to go mad and think that little things are important but everything that we plan let's think about whether it's going to make the day more enjoyable like is it important to giving us a better time Mm. um so that's why we put the emphasis on on the band and making sure that the food was going to be good and we had the drinks that we wanted to have people drinking and all of that stuff and there was a lot of minor details that if we'd not had that specific discussion then we may have put Mm. energy into that would have been wasted energy and wasted money but certainly I think that helped our outlook yeah in that respect, helped a lot to alleviate any kind of stress and also for me I kind of if I did start getting stressed about anything kind of checked myself a little bit and thought it's all part of the process like it's a positive process so even if something isn't you know is causing us a bit of stress actually it's all leading towards something really amazing so mm, don't ruin it with being stressed yeah. <laughs> yeah I think yeah we were really good at, at, at looking at things because there's, there's so many different options for weddings and and you know going to wedding fairs there are so many distractions as well and and you know the, the so great for some people but for us you know we don't need a donut wall because <laughs> I was literally yeah. thinking about yeah. <laughs> it, but it. you know if don't if you love your donuts you crack on and then and, and that's great for you but for us we were like we don't need these bits of distractions because what's important to us getting married that is our our main goal for the day is that we get married and even at one point we were like well this may not happen but as long as we get married at some point <laughs> because of yeah. covid and it was like yeah what what's important and yeah it was it was love and celebration and bits of shiny tassels and distractions and things that you know they're just not for us um and so we it was it actually removed a lot of stress on the day because there's a lot less to set up (laughs) yeah um and it was just we rock up we eat well we get married sorry (laughs) we get married (laughs) we drink (laughs) we eat we 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 do some speeches and we dance and that was it so to the point where we even didn't have a cake or a cheesecake or anything like that because we were like do we eat cake often not really do people are are people going to miss it no because they've just had dessert do we need this tradition it's not for us so let's just get on and celebrate yeah round of applause yeah Yeah, absolutely yeah it gives you more money to buy accessories like crowns (laughs) (laughs) do you think that that attitude has come partly obviously because of covid there's a chance you couldn't get married and you've spoken you know you supported your sister's wedding had being part of other weddings helped you with that attitude and approach to wedding planning um 
Pro- possibly, yeah. Uh, my sister has a very similar approach to me. We're, we're a bit no nonsense and just okay. straight to the point. But um, you know, you go to so- some weddings and they do have absolutely everything, and that's fab. But it's it ultimately you've got a, a budget and um, and also yeah, it's going back to it's almost like Marie Kondo, isn't it? Does this bring you joy? <laughs> will this will this will this small bag of almonds improve your wedding day? <laughs> <laughs> for some yeah but for us no <laughs> yeah. yeah we all yeah. say similar don't we we have to be careful because we don't want to disparage other suppliers that provide sure. those things that some people love but we're very much only do what matters and means something to you yeah, yeah. and there's some really cool suppliers out there and I'm, I'm you know i'll be honest we did get a little bit distracted by yeah that is cool we could do that yeah. But then when you get home and you, you're going through your stacks of leaflets and you go, do we don't really need this, do we? Or or do we really need it? And that and you know, especially playing around with the budget, what we were toying with was how big a band do we need? So it, we started with a five piece, then we like, well, maybe we need a saxophone, maybe we need a trombone. So that, that's where that's where our, our our budget went in the end was um, bringing more party rather than more products. Yeah, but that is amazing that you really sort of focus on that. Like you say, obviously, primarily it's about the wedding and, and, and you two making that commitment in front of your friends and family. But then secondly, for you guys, it's the party. So, you know, and, and again, it, it is advice that we give out, but it's really good to hear it from couples that you identify what is important to you about your day of celebration. And that's where you focus your, your budget. And, and it, you know... <sighs> We, we think that it's, it's, you know, it's about um, investing in your photography because, as you guys say, you know, that's going to be around for a long time. Other people want moving images as well, videography. So it really is about just sort of sitting down and saying, you know, what, what do we want on the day? What do we want afterwards? And then, you know, yeah. if, if there are other nice little frou-frou bits that, that can go into the mix as well that, that you know, add that little bit pizzazz that's that's nice so that's again that's really good advice yeah. to sort of say what's what's important um and I always get a little bit teary when people say you know the most important thing is that we're getting married because people do lose sight of that I think we, we you know again Ross and I see it quite a lot that there's a lot of distraction and people start to get overwhelmed and stressed by the planning elements so it's lovely to hear that that was your primary focus yeah. and I, I think just setting it out early on um between ourselves of what, what we wanted and why and, it, and I think the why is probably quite key because then we, we just had a joint approach to it and we weren't just going oh god oh we've got this to do and this and it was just we yeah we yeah we do need to get that band paid for because we really want that it's not mm. you know just I think just a team approach really helped us but that's kind of how we approach life yeah. <laughs> yeah. So again important it's really important yeah. so I don't think we need to ask you this because um yeah I think we've, we've covered everything and, and I think you, you're both sort of in agreement but is there anything that you'd do differently if you planned your day again would you do anything about it differently there's one thing that I would do and it's such a minuscule thing but there's a there's with the photography there's some photos that I think we miss because we when you're not thinking of what you I think we didn't fully think about what we wanted afterwards so we're like okay who goes in the family pictures have we got bridesmaids pictures down have we got this so we'd sent our list of these are the must takes and then oh sorry one second um and um then we ended up with some photos that hadn't occurred to us that didn't happen and I wish we'd have spent a bit more time looking through the guest list and thinking if we don't happen to get a you know photo on someone's phone of me with this person or us with these people like are we going to be bothered by it because I think there were there's a few photos that I wish we had that we don't and that's on us for not yeah um thinking of them yeah because you 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 get the core family picks down and and then we were quite happy with the natural approach go and take pictures of everyone and have a great time and do what you want uh but yeah there's you know there's a couple of key people that mean a lot to us that we fail to put on the on the family list and and that's yeah they're not the immediate family but it was just one yeah 
yeah. one or two people that we'd like snaps of, but they are captured in video. <laughs> but it's oh, well, can't quite put that on the wall, but yeah. 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 Yeah, but they're there. And 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 we had a very amateur video done at my wedding many moons ago, but you'd be amazed at, at how often our kids and, and, and the other family members want to watch those videos, especially as you get to that point, very sadly, where some people aren't with you anymore and you can go mm. back and look at grandparents and go, oh, yeah. you know, he's dancing to Oasis. Yeah. yeah. Who it was. Um, but yeah, so um, so it's, it's good that you did get them uh, yeah. on, on, on video. But the conversation we had, Heidi, actually really resonated with me and that was one of the driving forces as to why I was like, we need to get video uh yeah but on, on what you just said when people have passed away and uh and they're but their voice is on camera and they're there and they're with you i yeah. think that, that i went home and i was like oh yeah we need to definitely do it yeah yeah it, it is it's it's um it, i think videography becomes more re- and photography becomes more relevant um as time passes after your wedding um and i know you know obviously not obviously because some people kids are at their wedding but my kids weren't at our wedding and so for them it's really lovely to sort of look back at family that they never knew um and and grandparents that they never met and sort of go well that was your granddad or that was your great granddad and yeah so again you know weddings obviously are about the de- the celebration on the day but um but I do think sort of you know looking to the future and, and that, that's not easy to do when you're planning a wedding sort of think about you know, ten years down the road, mm. how are we going to look back at our wedding and 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 what do we want captured? Um, but again, Brian, that's that's a really good shout to sort of think about. Um, yeah, who who do we want to to look back on? Who do we want to see in these photos? And probably all the more reason for you to renew your vows and and do it all again. Yeah. <laughs> Have another party. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting my brother and his wife they they have their wedding photographer come and do their kids christenings so he it, like he's very much part of their life because they keep having kids um so <laughs> they've got this yeah. this progress of uh of the photographer from like the wedding through to now on the third child and and the, the, this photography comes in every time <laughs> that's amazing yeah find your photographer and hang on to them yeah <laughs> That's been absolutely lovely hearing about your day. Yeah, well, um, thank you so much. Photos, um, but yeah, thank you so much for sharing. It's um, it's yeah, it's it's a unique wedding venue, and um, and it, it's really good to to hear your advice. Um, I'm definitely going to be passing on the advice about check the football fixtures. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know it well it, on that you know it was great it worked for me and my family it worked for worked around us and then when we were having our photos after the ceremony they were all leaving the ground and all cheering us so if you if you do want additional fans i, I recommend it <laughs> okay yeah. it's so surprising to hear because united fans you know normally you can hear but now that's city fans isn't it yeah. <laughs> Not i didn't mean um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So thank you both so much. And Bryony, please, please send us um uh, if you've got a picture yes. of that travel board with, with yeah. love we'll love do. On, we'd love to see that. We'd absolutely <laughs> love to see that. So thank yeah, you. So much. Over. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for your time. Lovely to see thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks.